All right, so this is Thursday night of week 11, which will be my second chest and back workout for the week. This one, I do pretty much all cables. The first workout of the week is all barbells, pretty much, and dumbbells. So this one right here, I like to switch it up and do a constant tension load. I start off with the high cable crossovers, trying to warm the pec up, um, mainly my, my damaged pec. As you can see here, that nice, beautiful dip there. And the leaner I get, the more noticeable it becomes. You can actually see that nice, good, deep knot where that muscle used to be. I guess it's not a knot. It's more like a dip and everything. You see how good my belly's hanging here? Those shorts really bring out the gut, man. It really, really lets you see how good my, my gut looks. And also right here, you can tell that my right arm is actually dipping further back than my left arm. Even though it feels like I'm doing it completely even, I'm not. Uh, it just, it feels completely different. I got more range of motion in it, but actually tonight on this pec deck, I like to start off with the seat low and grab the handles real high to get more of the upper inner chest. But around rep seven, I actually had a strain in my incision. I uh, well, a sharp pain. I don't know what it was, but it just didn't feel good. So I just stopped for a second and I just kind of held the contraction. Then I just slowed my rep down and kind of reduced my range of motion a little bit. And I never felt it again the rest of the night. I am going to deload next week for week 12. So it is getting to that point where I just kind of need to give it a break and let it rest and do some deep tissue massage on it because I think the scar tissue is just getting really sticky and gritty. So I'm just going to kind of work on breaking that up uh, next week whenever I'm, I'm taking a rest period and not training at this moment. So I like to switch from more of a straight pec movement to a upper and lower. So as you saw, the first one was a low cable cross or a high cable crossover pulling down. And this one's a low cable crossover. So I go lower chest, middle chest, and then upper chest. Now when I'm powerlifting, I don't care about that. When I was powerlifting, it was just more about getting the compound movements in and then just making sure that I'm getting the overall progressive overload. But with bodybuilding, I'm trying to get more angles, more variety. I'm trying to get a squeeze at the top, the bottom, the middle, just working out from all angles. Plus with my chest, I can't really go heavy anymore. So I have to use a lot of variety and I have to use range of motion with static holds and slow negatives and everything else because pushing it too heavy, it's just, it doesn't work out for my pec anymore. And you can tell right here just how bad that, that pec pulls over and in. It, it really is a interesting looking part of my body now. So for the most part, it feels normal, but every now and then I can feel it and it is super uncomfortable, but you know, it's all part of losing weight, seeing the actual damage that I did to it and seeing how it's gonna affect me whenever I decide to step on stage next year and actually bodybuild. If I could get my fat down enough, I got the rest of the year. I'm giving myself until December to actually have my abs completely out. I'm not going to rush it and get in a hurry and then get disappointed. To be honest, I would actually like to hit September, October to have my abs fully exposed, but I won't be upset if it doesn't happen until December. Now, on this pec deck, I like to put the seat up high, and I like to grab the handles down low, the opposite of what I did first because this is more on the middle of the chest, the more middle lower chest that I feel this. The other way, putting the seat down low and grabbing the handles high, I feel more in the upper this one I feel more in the lower, but generally speaking, I feel this just completely across the midline of the chest, either position. It's just different hand grips and different angles get different uh, feels in the chest. And whichever one feels better, that's the one that I typically like to push a little bit harder on. But since I tweaked my chest a little bit in the very beginning, I kind of took it really easy on my chest the whole night and just really lightweight, slow and controlled movement. I'm not in a rush to get hurry, uh, hurt. I'm not trying to get hurt and I'm not trying to overwork my body to the point where I start breaking it back down and tearing it up. You know, this is all for fun and all for um, looks. So performance really isn't an issue for me at the moment. So after we're done with chest, we move to back. I like to do the neutral grip, grip wide bar pull down. Now this bar I built myself. I took an old Olympic bar and I cut it down and then I cut handles and I pretty much used the bar to make the handles and I got some flat bar and everything like that and welded this all up myself. So this is an extremely wide neutral gut bar that I built because I wanted something that over exaggerated this position. I actually like to get another one and build another one that's not so wide and gets my arms parallel like up and down instead of so far angled out. But this hits the center of my back really, really well on that um, middle trap, lower trap area that I'm trying to develop and build up my thickness because that is the weakest part of my back. But on this night in particular, what I like to do is I like to start off really wide and then go really close. So I do the exact opposite of what I did there. Well, still doing a neutral grip, but 
On these, I like to hold and contract as hard as I can. Now, you can't tell in the video, but I'm actually flaring my elbows out as wide as I possibly can while trying to pinch my shoulder blades together as hard as I possibly can with a nice squeeze at the bottom. Now, I don't really squeeze at the top and hold. I don't think there's a point to holding at the top and squeezing. The stretch is important, but unfortunately, this cable isn't high enough to get a full stretch, so I don't really you know, dwell too much on the full stretch, more the concentration and constant, the contraction and the squeeze at the bottom of these. And as I get heavier, I'm not able to hold it as my muscle starts to fatigue. So I just do my best trying to hold it and my range of motion gets dramatically worse as the set goes on. But by this time, the muscle's so fatigued, I'm really just trying to get as much out of it as I can before my set's over. As you'll see right here, full squeeze, range of motion, and then we skip to the end of the set, and oh, not a full range of motion, and not a full range of motion with no squeeze, as much as I could get out of that set. My back was really pumped up right here, and it felt really nice and thick. I wish I looked the way I felt on camera versus how I actually look. Like If you guys could just feel the way I feel when I'm doing this back workout and how thick and juicy I feel, and then I look at myself in the camera and then realize I just look I just look thick and the wrong kind of juicy. I just look thick and chubby, right? But that fat's coming down every single week. On these, I don't really squeeze and pause. With the seated cable rows, I like to just keep it moving. I like to just get a good stretch in the lats and just keep it moving all the way through the whole entire movement. I don't really focus on any type of you know, top squeeze contraction. It's just about moving the lats and getting the blood in there and just trying to pump as much blood in there at this point as I can get. I am trying to flare my elbows out, squeezing my shoulder blades together and trying to get the contraction in the middle of the back. These straight arm pull downs right here, I really like these because again, these emphasize on that lower lat middle back between the shoulder blades area, depending on how you pull and how you lean. This is really good back workout right here. You can't go heavy on it. It's a humbler. It will make you humble yourself. And then you could tell the way my belly hangs that I'm serious about this movement and I'm bending over far enough because my gut is dropping down. But eventually that gut will be gone. This is, like I said, week 11. I'm going to take next week off and deload and rest my body, massage and deep tissue, everything, so I can come back for another 11, 12 weeks. And then I lost 30 pounds on this go around. So I'm hoping the next go around I can drop about another 15, 20 pounds in the next 12 weeks after that. And then really showcase my my build without being show ready, but getting to the point where I can see all my weaknesses and flaws. Because that's the whole purpose of this is I'm trying to see where I'm weak at, which I know I have a lot of weak areas and weak points. But I won't really actually be able to tell what needs to be brought up and what needs to be backed off until I get lean enough to see like, oh man, my rear delts are really weak or my front delts or my side chest or my lower lats or or just whatever. And in order to get to that point, I have to be able to see what I need to work on. And the whole purpose of this training for the rest of the year is getting to that point where I do get lean enough where I can see my trouble areas. So on these right here, I actually like to start off with a decline crunch. And then this actually, I feel it in my lower abdominal more than my upper. Even though you figure to be for the upper abs, I feel this more in the lower abdominal and the hip flexors because, you know, your hip flexors are actually helping pulling and contracting your abdominal forward. And I do those first and get a really good lower abdominal work. And then I switch to these reverse crunches, which I feel these 100% in the upper abdominal, which is surprisingly enough opposite of what you think you would feel them. You figured I'd feel them in my lower, but I don't. I feel them in my upper. Maybe I'm doing them wrong. Maybe I'm not contracting correctly, but... You know, opposites attract, I guess. I don't know. But anyways, they feel really good. I like these a lot because I get a burn in my abs with no pain or discomfort or anything of the sort. And then I go to these little side lumberjack, which are Maduras, cable, twist, whatever you want to call them. These are more for the intercostal and the obliques. And I'm not trying to get my midsection thick. It's thick enough. I'm fat as it is. I want to get it thinner. And in order to get thinner... Well, I just have to keep losing weight and dropping the fat, but I don't want to build up my midsection, which I know it's not really my choice if I build it up or not at this point because I spent probably close to 10 years powerlifting and my midsection might just be thick with abdominal wall muscle from all the years of heavy lifting. But then again, I could just be, you know, fantasizing how my abdominal is going to look and thinking, well, maybe it's just a really thick blocky midsection from all the powerlifting. No, it's probably a thick, fat midsection from all the overeating is probably more than likely what it is. 
But um, tonight I actually started getting veins in my shoulders and in my pecs, which was nice to see because I haven't had any vascularity in my shoulders and my pecs in a long time. My arms, my forearms are very vascular. My biceps are very vascular. My thighs, when I work them out, get extremely vascular with veins. Same thing for my calves. But my chest and shoulders, I haven't had any veins in those in a while. So seeing veins come through my shoulders and my upper chest was really actually motivating tonight. And then uh, it, it just really kind of makes you want to keep pushing a little bit harder to get your results. And like I said, next week, I'm actually not working out this uh, Saturday. I'm starting my deload week on Saturday. I'm going to take a full week off of work, which, you know, it's like, oh, you could be going backwards and you're going to be losing results. And yeah, but my elbows are a little achy, not painful, but I can feel that my body just needs a break and I need to back off and give myself a little bit of time to recover and rest. And that way I can come in with a fresh mind and really just get at it again for another 12 weeks and, and hopefully double my progress in 12 more weeks and be that much closer to my goal of competing. Well, that's it for the video, guys. Thanks for watching. Until tomorrow.